I built this sledge to carry myself and all of my equipment into the bush. The best part is, it only cost me $40 to make. I was inspired by the traditional dog sled design. Notice how the passenger rides standing up at the back while the cargo is stored securely in the front. If you want to see how I built it, stay tuned. I love working in the bush all year round, and winter is no exception. With my backpack stuffed full of gear and my chainsaw strapped to the hood of my snowmobile, I was off to do some cutting. But unfortunately, I was unable to carry everything with me that I needed for the day. I just didn't have enough room. It was then I decided that I needed a sturdy sledge that I could tow behind my sled. One that would be lightweight, yet sturdy enough and roomy enough to haul all of my equipment. So I started searching around for a cargo sleigh to purchase. However, I discovered that most cargo sleighs sell for several hundred dollars a piece. This was outside my budget. Besides, I couldn't find a design that I was happy with, so I decided to build my own, exactly the way I wanted and at a fraction of the cost. In this episode, I'll show you how I built my sledge, problems I encountered, and solutions I used to make a final product that I am extremely happy with. To help keep costs down, I gathered a few small cedar trees from the bush. The next material I needed was a pair of skis. Now the great thing about skis is that I can almost always find a free pair. People will often buy skis, never use them, and eventually set them on their front lawns with a free sign on them. Especially in the spring, I make sure to keep an eye open for these free sets of skis. As it so happened, my friend offered me a pair of cross-country skis which were collecting dust in his garage. But even if I was unable to locate a free pair of skis right away, I know that most local thrift stores sell them for a good price. My local thrift store sells cross-country skis for $5 a pair, and used downhill skis for $30 a pair. Then I went to the hardware store and purchased a couple 2x6 boards, and as well a couple 1x10 planks. In total, the lumber cost me around $30. I also purchased a small box of screws, a set of ring screws, and a couple clevises. All of these things cost approximately $10. After cutting the boards into the right lengths, I was ready to go. time at all, I had the base of the sledge put together. The base is two and a half feet wide and five and a half feet long. Using the small cedars I had harvested, I constructed the railings and supports. Finally, I used a couple planks that I had ripped from a cedar post to make the sides of the cargo box. I left the back of the cargo box open so that if I want to transport posts, I can let them hang out the back of the sledge. 
I fasten ring screws to the inside of the box so that I can use them to securely strap in my cargo. As well, I added netting at the back of the box to prevent loose cargo from sliding out during transport. Finally, I added a heavy ring screw and clevis to the front of the sledge. I used a remaining 5 foot section of cedar to connect the sledge to my snowmobile. The first big test for my sledge came in the spring when I used it to collect maple sap. I found it extremely helpful. However, I noticed two problems right away with the sledge's design. First of all, I had left the tips of the skis vulnerable without reinforcement, and it wasn't long until one of them had snapped. By the time I had made it out of the bush, the right ski tip had completely sheared off. Secondly, the sledge tended to wander a bit behind the snowmobile. This would obviously be a big problem if the sledge decided to wander into a tree on the side of the trail while I was driving. I wanted the hitch to connect to a single point on the sledge so that it would have free range of motion around tight corners, but the problem was that it had way too much range to be stable. I needed to come up with a solution that would still give the sledge a good range of motion, while at the same time limiting that motion so that it would remain stable. The first thing I did was to toss the cross-country skis. I found that they were too narrow and flimsy to make good runners for my sledge anyway. As luck would have it, it was now spring, and I was able to pick up two free sets of downhill skis that someone had carted to the side of the road. I took the bindings off one set and fastened them to the bottom of my sledge. To reinforce the skis, I used a couple small pieces of cedar to brace the ski tips to the front of the sledge. I used another couple pieces of cedar to reinforce the hitch. These newly added pieces on the hitch act as tie rods. As you can see, the hitch is now connected to three points on the sleigh, but I made sure that there was a little bit of slack on the tie rod ends. This allows the hitch to pull from the center mount, while the side mounts assist in keeping the sledge on track. The hitch is therefore allowed a small range of motion. Slack enough to steer around corners, but tight enough to keep it from wandering around. I also bolted a cross piece between the tie rods and hitch pole to keep the tie rods from tearing away from the pole when under tension. There. Now it's time to take it for a spin. I am extremely happy with the final product. I now have a sleigh that is lightweight, yet sturdy, versatile, and fun. I am currently using my sledge to transport logging equipment into the bush, but I have already got it lined up for several jobs this winter. Next week I will be transporting cedar posts with it, the following week I will be using it to move firewood, and in the spring I will be using it to collect maple sap. I will also be using the sledge to spend quality time with my friends and family. One person can ride on the back of the sleigh, and another can be cozied up inside the box under a heap of blankets as we tour through the bush. A third and fourth person can ride on the snowmobile ahead, but I bet you the most coveted spot will be inside the box. To top the day off, we'll all stop somewhere to build a fire, drink hot chocolate, and take in the scenery. Now it doesn't get any better than that. I'd say that's worth $40. What about you?